Hey everyone, it's Kathy. Welcome back to the channel. For those of you who are new subscribers, welcome, welcome. It's so good to have you with us. For those of you who are long time or continuing subscribers, thank you so much for being a treasured part of this channel. I pray for you guys daily and I pray that this word touches and blesses you. And as you're listening to it, anyone that comes to your mind that you feel could benefit from this word, please be sure to subscribe and send this word to them. So I'm coming to you with a message based on something that I've been going through recently and the Lord's been reminding me of some things through it. And he wanted me to share this with you guys because some of you are going through, or should I say many of you, those of you that this message will reach, you're either going through it, you're You've just finished it or you're just beginning this battle. And the title of this message is, You're Using the Wrong Weapons. You're Using the Wrong Weapons. So, um, I've been involved in like a spiritual battle, kind of where I live. And um, the Lord's been showing me some things to do. So, first thing he said was, uh, 2 Corinthians 10.4. The scripture is, for the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. The NIV says the weapons we fight with are not weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. Basically, as we've heard it growing up, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, fleshly of the world, but they're mighty through God, through the pulling down of strongholds. So if you're facing a battle right now and you're wondering, well, how am I going to win this? I, I don't care how much I fast, how much I pray, I give, I rebuke. Well, it could be you're not using all of your weapons. And, and some of you I'm seeing are going through it in the, the flesh, like arguing and fighting and uh, one-upping, having to have the last word. Uh, you know, the Lord calls that a contentious or even a strife, strifeful spirit. And I understand sometimes we get pulled into that realm. And that's that's where the enemy wants to get us. Is if he can get us in the flesh, he can, he can beat us and whip us. Our weapons as Christians, as born-again, spirit-filled believers, is the weapons of God, and, and it's the armor of God, and we're going to talk about that in a minute. So if you are battling something right now and you're not seeing the breakthrough, I want you to just stop what you're doing and take a check up and say, Lord, am I doing it in the flesh or am I doing it in the spirit through you? Ephesians 6.12 says, for we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits or wickedness in the heavenly or high places. So when I was reading this, and I've read this scripture many times, the Lord amplified to me. He said, this is what you're battling, evil rulers and authorities. Well, the kingdom of darkness is very organized, just like the kingdom of heaven, but the kingdom of heaven is brighter, greater, and more powerful. So that's the one you got to lean into. And it's kind of like the military we have on the earth. It's very organized. There's different ranks. There's different duties carried out. Well, these are the things that as believers that with the anointing of Jesus Christ on us, we are battling against. And trust me, these enemies can see us. They can see us in the spirit realm. So this is what we're um, battling against. Evil rulers and authorities. Well, they're a ruler and they have authority. Not over us, because Jesus gave us his authority through his name and his blood. Are you using his power and his authority that he gave you? Or are you trying to fight a spiritual battle with fleshly carnal ways? If you do, you're not going to win. Um mighty powers in this dark world well yeah even even the lord is telling us to the apostle paul there are mighty powers in this dark world now i don't give any uh credit to them but i do know they're in operation because it all started with the fall of lucifer from heaven when he rebelled against god and he he saw everybody praising him and he basically got full of pride and said i want them to worship me i want them to do what i want them to do but immediately God kicked him and a third of the angels out of heaven because he is God and there is no other beside him. And when they said, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven, that's how fast he fell. And his 
his cohorts fast as lightning. And we can't even keep up with the speed of lightning. God hasn't changed his mind about his authority and the authority he gave Jesus when he went to the cross. And he gave us that authority through his name. Remember, to get to the Father, you got to go through the Son. you got to operate in the power of Christ. Because God gave Jesus a name which is above every name. Every single name, every ruler, every wickedness. He has put them under our feet till, till he has made our enemies our footstool. But we've got to operate in his power. And this takes time. This takes training. This takes exercising. But you've got to start somewhere. Instead of getting in the flesh, pull back and start praying and say, in the name of Jesus, I bind this. Lord, show me what's in operation here. And the more you do that, the more he's going to start showing you what you're, what you're battling against or where it's coming from. But he will also show you things about the people involved that it'll make you pray for them. He wants you to pray for their salvation and their deliverance. But also, he he's teaching you how to be a warrior. You know, a lot of Christians... They're born-again Christians, but they have no authority. They have it, but they're not operating in it. And they're not being taught their authority. I don't hear many people teaching today about the authority of the believer. I was blessed to learn from some great teachers. And God has sent me to tell people, you need to learn your authority and walk in it. Now, you don't have to walk around all day, you know, ready to fight and tear something down. But when it presents itself, you're ready. That's why the military, before they go into... Warfare, or they go into any type of assignment, they have to go through boot camp first. They have to learn how to use the weapons. We have to use, learn how to use the weapons of our warfare. They're not carnal. They're not fleshly. They don't come from here. They, don't, they come from your mouth, but it's through the name of Jesus. That's where you've got to practice your authority. So what is it we need to operate in? We can't operate in the flesh, so what do we operate in? Well, Ephesians 6 says... Put on the full armor of God every single day. And first of all, it's the belt of truth or your loins girt about with the belt of truth. Speaking the truth of God's word in your situation. And you won't know it unless you get in it. But it also means just walking in truth and telling the truth, even if you're standing alone. Because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. So choose truth. The breastplate of righteousness. These are for born-again believers who are covered in the righteousness of Christ. And your blessed breastplate is what covers your heart. So it has to be in your heart. So this is uh, for born-again, spirit-filled believers. The sandals or the shoes of peace. You should always have your feet ready wherever God sends you to bring peace to a situation, to speak peace into that situation, but also to bring the peace of Christ and the Word of God, to bring salvation to people, which brings peace. You know, there's a scripture where the Lord says to not think about what you're going to say until that time, but always be ready to give an answer to someone of the hope that lies in you. If all you're doing is talking about your bills and whining about how this hurts and that, you know, God knows all that, but what does the word say about it? Put the word on as your salve, as your balm of Gilead, and let the Lord bandage you up and go to the doctor if you have the opportunity, but still stand on the word. I've even told people, look, if you got to take your medicine, take your medicine, but take it in faith that, that you are still healed by the stripes of Jesus, according to 1 Peter 2.24. I'm not against taking medicine if you need it, but if that medicine is all you depend on and it becomes your idol and you feel like you can't live without it, no, we can't live without Jesus, and he is the great physician. So part of the breastplate of righteousness and the belt of truth is knowing who he really is and the truth of who he is. You got to get in the word to study that and listen to good teaching tapes, even in good praise and worship music, because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The shield of faith. Your shield is your faith. You're going to believe the Lord no matter how it looks. You're going to believe his word and what he says about your circumstances, that I'm the head and I'm the, not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. I lend to many nations and I don't borrow. I have spoken that over myself when I didn't have a dime to my name. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. I lend to many nations and I don't borrow. That's in Deuteronomy 28. Read that today and start speaking that over your life. Ask the Lord, say, show me in the word where I need to go. You can Google it. Just Google scriptures for healing or scriptures for finances, scriptures for peace or mental illness or whatever. The Lord will lead you through so much. 
Um, so your shield of faith, you just got to believe. Even when nobody else is believing, you got to believe and trust him. And boy, can you trust him. He is not a man he should lie, and he's never going to fail us. So if it doesn't come right away, either he's doing something in you or he's seeing He's working some other things out behind the scenes. He's watching you to see how much you're going to stand. Because then that's how he'll stretch your faith in you. And he'll train you more. Even though he already knows. And the most important one, of course, is the helmet of salvation. Put your helmet of salvation. That means you got to have your head covered. and your Because it starts from the head down. The blood of Jesus. And that comes through being born again and asking Jesus to forgive your sins, to come in your heart and save you, according to Romans 10, 9, and 10. And, and if you're not born again or saved, you have to be born not only of this world first. got to be born into the earth, but you got to be born from above, like the Word says, of the Spirit. And how you do that is you just say, Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and Savior and your sacrifice on the cross. I believe God raised you from the dead for my justification. I repent of my sins. Come in my heart and save me. Fill me with your spirit to overflowing and be my Lord and Savior. That's all you have to do. And just ask for his forgiveness and say, Lord, help me out of this. Help me break free from Satan and his grip or this sin or this addiction or whatever it is you're addicted to. The Lord will help you. Many of you I, I see have been crying out for help. And he sent me to tell you this. All you have to do is give your heart and life to him. I don't care where you're at. And all you have to do is just call on the name of the Lord and you will be born from above. And then when you read the Bible, some people say, well, I don't understand it. That's because you have to read it with spiritual eyes. You have to read it with God's eyes because he's the one who wrote it. Once you become born again, you're going to start understanding when you read the word because he's going to show it to you when you read it, what he meant by it. Hallelujah for those of you that give your heart to Christ. Let me know. And then finally, the sword of the Spirit. Got a big sword, which the, which the Bible is also called a two-edged sword. Sharper than any, It's sharper than any two-edged sword. Divides or it cuts asunder the soul and spirit. The, the Word of God will divide everything. It will break open everything. It will bring everything to light. But it also heals too. And the sword of the Spirit is the fire of the Spirit of the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit in you, which you just prayed with me to receive. So when you lift up that word and you lift up and you move in the spirit of the Lord, you say, I bind this in the name of Jesus. Um, I've, I'll ride by it and if I see an accident on the road. I'll just say, Father, I just speak healing to them and salvation and deliverance. And I pray you touch and work everything out and have mercy on them. If there's anybody there that's not going to make it, have, forgive their sins and take them to heaven. Give them a chance, Lord. But I, I mean, I just fight for them when I see it. That's the kind of way we should be praying every day if we see something. Um, if you see someone in the store and you can tell they're really sick or they're bent over and they can't walk, you know, just pray for their healing and pray for God. to. Uh, I've seen people even beside the road holding up signs and they would just hang their head down and wouldn't even look at anybody. And the scripture, I believe it's Isaiah 61, comes to me how he is the glory and the lifter of my head. So I'll just look at them and say, Lord, touch them. Be the glory and the lifter of their head. Save them. Lift their head, Lord, and give them hope, a hope in a future. Because that's Jeremiah 29. He gives us all a hope in a future. So that is a the short word I felt led to give you. God says you're fighting with the wrong weapon. Start getting in the spirit. Start using the word, the sword of the spirit. And to back off of the way you've been fighting it and just let him show you and let him teach you. Because this battle that I've been fighting... Thank you, Lord. Some of these spirits don't come out except by prayer and fasting, and it, and it takes a while. There's a reason why it's called a stronghold. You know, somebody that's super strong and can lift a lot of weights, well, it's a strong hold. Well, sometimes it takes extra fire and extra fire from God to break that stronghold. He said, first, when you enter a strong man's house, you must first bind the strong man, the one that's got the authority or the rule. It's a demon. Just pray and ask the Lord to show you what it is. He, he might just tell you, just speak my name. Or he'll tell you, you know, I cast the spirit of division or whatever it is, strife, anger, murder, whatever it is, I'll cast it out. Listen to the Holy Spirit. That's part of the sword of the Spirit is holding up the Spirit and following him because he said those who are led by the Spirit are the sons of God. So be led by the Spirit, not by your flesh. And if you have any prayer requests or you, any 
where this message has touched you, please let me know and share it with those that you know is going through a hard time or a battle right now. And um, I love you guys and I'm praying for you. Have an awesome day. Bye.